Welcome back, everybody, to Hoya Vision at Home. I'm Sarah Beth Crawford. And I'm Holland Touchstone here for another episode. Today, we have an exciting show with some informative segments. Yes, we do. We're starting with a trip down memory lane and visiting Ford Elementary School. This week, Raymond and I had the opportunity to stop by and see how teachers are handling the shift back to in-person learning. Hi, guys. It's Raymond Calra, and today we're so excited to take you on a trip down memory lane and welcome you back to Ford Elementary. This is where it started for some of the Hoyas, and we're so excited to bring you back. Today, I got to talk to Miss Ashley Miller and my mom, Miss Cara Calra, about the transition from remote to blended classrooms. Let's go on inside. I think just making sure that the kids online know what we're doing. So a lot of us have put in PowerPoint slides every single day, created Bitmoji Classrooms with all the links in to one session that we can link during our live sessions and then post after school for those who miss or for the parents who are not with their students, they can review them at night. So I think it's just added more of the planning ahead of time, which adds more time during the week. But I would say mostly it's just the planning ahead of time that has really been the change in the workload. Um, the students in school seem to be adapting just fine. They're just very happy to be back with their teachers. We have done a lot. We, of course, are wearing masks. We also have scheduled lunch times inside the classroom, and then on the other days we eat in the cafeteria, so that lessens the students in the cafeteria at one time. We have scheduled recess times now, so only two classes are out per grade level at a time. We walk one way and walk back from specials a different way and to lunch. So we really are distancing ourselves in the hallway so that they're not big clusters to gather together to spread the germs. So far that kids aren't cooperating with the masks or are they doing just fine with them? They're doing just fine with them. It bothers them a little bit, but they're keeping them on and they're making sure that they keep them clean. We know this time hasn't been easy on teachers, but how has this made your workload even heavier? Um, it's a lot of front-loading lesson plans, getting everything ready ahead of time so that you've prepared for anything that may pop up, whether it's uh, with the students up in the class, make the kids excited, and I've been spending as much time outside in the gardens with my students as possible since I am the environmental education specialist. Well, Hoyas, that's all you get from me today. Thank you so much to Shay Kappel and Megan Smith for allowing us to come visit, and to Ashley Miller and my mom for speaking to us. I'm Raymond Calra, and let's take it back to Sarah Beth and Holland. Wow, I'm glad to see that Cobb County is able to go back to school and follow all of the safety precautions. I know, elementary schools are doing great in paving the way back to school. Well, with less than a month before high schoolers have the option to do face-to-face -face learning, I'm sure students are all wondering what changes and protocols will be put into place. Yes, I'm curious about how we will go back to school, but thankfully, Riley and Maria talked to some teachers and students about what, how things will work in November. Hey Hoyas, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of wondering how the teachers are going to teach online and in person. Riley Curtis had a chance to talk to a couple of them about how they plan on doing this. Let's go see what their plans are. How are you going to adjust your assessment plans and test schedules um, to make it equal opportunities for those um, learning online and in the classroom? I'll probably do what I've been doing this semester, which is, um, you know, have things set up online and then, and then the kids that are actually in class, they'll just have a paper copy of whatever I'm doing. And then we'll be given the same opportunity. So for example, test will probably be open note. For those kids that are going to stay that stay with online teaching, um, the real challenge for them is anytime I do something that involves that interaction and we will receive some type of training so i imagine that there might be some difficulties but i'm pretty sure as long, you know now that we've been doing this for a while online got that experience we're going to bring that into the classroom and now that we've been at this for a couple months and i think that um if there are any obstacles i'm sure we will be able to figure out how to, to solve any of those problems if they do arise well, there you have it. So whether you're going back in person or online, the teachers are ready for you. That will be very different, but I'm happy we're going back and staying safe. I agree, Sarah Beth. Now let's take it to Paige and Bianca with HSPN to get an insight on Harrison Sports. Hello, everybody. I'm Carter Woods. And I'm Bianca Sanchez. Welcome to HSPN. We sure do have a lot to cover today. We sure do, Connor. First, let's go to Paige and unzip her segment on what our football players and cheerleaders have in their bags. If you could tell us some interesting stuff that's in your bag. I keep my K-bands, 
I think I got these right before my freshman year trial for high school cheer. A pair of earbuds I've been using for a year now or year or two, and I've used it throughout most of my high school football games, and it really gets me focused for the games, and it helps me lock in to uh, be able to perform on the field. I keep all my bows I've ever had, which is a lot. My seventh grade bow in here, eighth grade, and then all like the different types of bows. Um, I just kind of keep these on here. One, because I don't have anywhere else to put it. I get a new pair of gloves every year, and I use it throughout the entire year. Okay. My dad gets my gloves for me every year, and it's like the same pair. And we won all the games last year, so I guess it's kind of like a thing now for me to wear them. Yeah. It's a bracelet that I actually broke (laughs) at one of my games. But I keep it in my bag. A little girl named Macy Evans made it for me the very first time we met. And this is the first gift she's ever given me. And I just did so well that game. So that was like a superstition. So I keep this little bracelet in there. And I've never taken it out. So we're just going to put it right back in there. Thank you for doing this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So. All right. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much. No problem. All right, bye. Wow, that was pretty cool. I'm surprised at how many bow shoes able to fit on her bag. Same here. It's pretty cool how he gets a new set of gloves every year. I know. Now let's run on over to cross country and see how they are handling COVID. Hey, Hoyas. My name is James Boyle, and today I got the opportunity to talk to Coley Mendoza, one of many Hoyas who had to quarantine due to potential exposure to the coronavirus. Here's what he had to say about the situation. What was the effect on you running by yourself in quarantine? Um, you just, it's kind of a, lo- a lack of motivation just because you don't have other people to push you and like, it's harder to get out there and go do it since it's not like a formal setup, people to go with. How did you, how many days did you have to run by yourself? Um, 14 basically, because I, I didn't show up to practice after the negative test. I didn't show back up and I didn't race or anything. So I, I was quarantining from running from cross country since after we got tested. What do you think of Coach God's new plan for uh, separating the kids for the rest of the season? It makes sense. You know, you don't want your top runners to have a risk of not being able to run where it matters more. But quarantining does make sense if you were high exposed. I'm glad they're taking as many precautions as they can. Exactly. Now let's slide on over to basketball and see how their tryouts are going. Hey Hoyas, I'm Bianca Sanchez. And I'm Melanie Reading. On HSPN, and today we are going to be interviewing two basketball players to see how they are preparing for this season. What have you done to stay conditioned for basketball this season? Uh, uh, just like run like outside and like during, like, at the beginning of quarantine, we had the six-week program where we had to, like, run and do strength and conditioning and stuff. So I've been doing that, and I've been hoping, like, all summer, trying to get ready for this season. And we just started strength and conditioning Monday, where we did, like, burpees and split squats and squats, stuff like that. Based on how much work you have been putting in for tryouts, how do you think you will do? I'm really confident in my skill that I'm going to do the tryouts. And my goal is to hopefully make varsity again and again. What have you been doing to prepare for tryouts this season? Well, what I've been doing to prepare myself is um, I pretty much train every day. I really train for Monday and Wednesday, so I just train pretty much. How has Corona affected where and when you practice for basketball? Uh, corona affected where I play. Um, Cause pretty much gyms are not open because of Corona. And I pretty much train outside too. Well, this has been Bianca Sanchez. And Melanie Weeding with HSPN. Bye, Hoyas. It's sad we didn't have any games this week, but as always, our Hoyas are putting safety first. Speaking of safety, up next we have Callan showing us a fun fall activity that respects social distancing. Really? Where did she go? Oh, you'll just have to watch the segment to see. Hogan, and today I'm here in beautiful LJ, Georgia at one of the most prominent apple orchards in Georgia, BJ Reese. Come on, let's go explore. 
BJ Reese Orchards is a family-owned and operated orchard in Alajay, Georgia, tucked in the North Georgia Mountains. They are home to the You Pick Orchards, meaning you pick your own apples. There's a country bakery, petting farm, pony rides, and much more. spirit happy fall y'all i'm callan hogan i'll back to dusk oh my gosh that looks like a blast we should do that together soon oh my gosh we should <laughs> all in what have you been doing for fun well i recently went to the beach for a nice break from zoom calls me too fall break was so relaxing i wonder what other boys did over break let's check in with bella may and lauren for all the details hey guys it's bella may so today alongside lauren leach we are going to be seeing what the Hoyas did over fall break, so stay tuned in. Over fall break, I caught up in some schoolwork, I hung out with my friends, I went shopping, and I went down to Miami to tour at a university that I'm interested in down there. For my fall break, this is pretty much all I did. I just stayed outside, I you know, soaked up the sun, did some tanning, and then when I was inside, I watched a lot of Netflix, movies, TV shows, caught up on like all the TV shows that I wanted to watch. And yeah, I just relaxed on the couch. It was really cool. I worked out. I went outside a little bit, walked my dog, did my studies uh, for my teachers, wrote my paper. I studied and then um, went to work and then meditated some more. Spend time with the family and all that. Spend time with family and friends. What did I do over fall break? As disappointing as it may sound, I didn't do much. I, I, I kind of just stayed home, relaxed a little bit, tried to catch up on sleep and catch up on a little homework I was behind on. Hey guys, so that wraps up today's segment. I heard some pretty cool things. So, see you next time. It looks like everyone had a great break. For sure, it's already been such a busy first week back. I haven't heard from Mark and Katie in a while. Me neither, that's weird. Let's see what they've been up to. Talk to me. Yeah, well, I don't feel comfortable giving that information over the phone. Can I ask who this is? Seagullable? Cruise lines? Yeah, my name's Sid Tom. You tell me I can get a five-day, two-night vacation? Where did, where did you say that was? Boom Shakalaka. I don't think I've ever heard of that place. Okay. Uh huh. Well, uh, can you tell me about the resort? Okay. My favorite animal is a camel. Why? They have camels on the beach? Double humped. Well, I mean, that's very tempting, but um, I, I'm just not a fan of the whole sunny tropical theme. It snows there? Well, hey, okay, where's my sign? What do you need from me? Ah, uh, well, well, how much is it? I only have like $741 in my account. You're kidding! That's perfect! Okay, yeah, my, uh, my card number is Yeah, can you send me some kind of like a confirmation? Hello? to give us a good laugh. They sure do. Well, Hoyas, that brings us to the end of our show. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next week's show. I'm Holland Touchstone. And I'm Sarah Beth Crawford. Bye, Bye Hoyas. Hoyas.